Hello Aquarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Aquarius December 2024 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. I'm calling the theme of this month for Aquarius from broken to breakthroughs. This is your Aquarius tip list for this month. Any challenges or interference that the stars may be running for you, I've got some tips on how you can break through and have the best month possible. And also we'll just talk about other factors that will create your experience this month and things you need to be aware of to have the best month possible. This is for you if Aquarius is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Aquarius placement you're listening for. What I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. If you're a very late degree Aquarius friend, so birthdays like February 15th through the rest of the sign or Aquarius placements 23 degrees through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Pisces report as your very late degree friends will benefit from both readings. In the YouTube version, I'll be using the chart to work on. I do have a syndicated podcast and I will put the chart as the thumbnail in case you want to take a peek. Okay, so let's look at, okay, so this report is going to be very much focused on opportunities or challenges that may come and ways that you can use the energies to break through. But we do have a lot of just naturally positive energy for Aquarius this month. A stellium in Sagittarius, the sun, the new moon on December 1st, and Mercury in retrograde, all in fire sign, which goes beautifully with your air placement. So there will be a lot of movement in, in accord, you know, speaking your language, flowing well, the Sagittarius optimism and buoyancy and excitement and expansion works well for your expanded intellect and the way that you like to see things. So, you know, in general, the dominating sign this month is one that flows well for you. So that's exciting. For Aquarius, these Sagittarius placements light up your 11th house of Aquarius. So all of those beautiful social uh, networks and friendships and groups with collective goals, uh, you know, internet-based projects, communities, anything like that is, you know, all in the line of focus and will come up strongly friendships and networking and connections with other people and with groups are going to become front and center this month there may be lots of opportunities to solve problems you have in your life through the help from somebody else so by connecting with other people in these contexts you may find that people show up perfectly for the thing that you need now because one of these transits is mercury in retrograde uh, that can bring blessings and awesome things back from the past you can run into someone that, that you really enjoyed connecting with, and you can have great experiences and great conversations, and you can meet people or re-meet people, you know, in a different context that can add to the enrichment of the relationship. So a lot of goodies from the past are coming in with this retrograde specifically because it's in a nice angle for you. But we all know that retrogrades can bring up challenges. So I'm going to do our first challenge and breakthrough tip. The challenge here is Mercury going retrograde in the 11th house can cause miscommunications and misunderstandings within those social circles and within your friendships. A situation might occur where you feel disconnected from your friends or you notice delays in their communication, which could cause you to wonder where you're at or what, what they're thinking. There could be delays in things like group projects and frustrations can come up. A keynote this month could be frustration for Mars retrograde, but I am going to spend quite a bit of time talking about that um, to help you get through. In general, one of the keynotes and ways to make this month as great as possible is if something isn't flowing and it doesn't absolutely have to be done, then table it and go with what is flowing. This is a very simple thing to do. A lot of things we have to do, we can't get out of, and in which case you can't just abandon those things that have to be done. But there are a lot of things that we do that we're pushing through that may or may not really need to be done at that moment. So if you follow the flow and you jump on the train that's moving well, then you can avoid a lot of frustration. But with Mercury retrograde here, you may feel this disconnection. You may notice these delays in the group projects. You may see miscommunications and misunderstandings come through. In general, if you had any trouble within any of these groups or friendships or social circles, it may be brought to light now because a lot of times when Mercury is moving direct, if there's some kind of issue, that gets swept under the rug. But at retrograde time, the rug gets picked up and everything comes blowing out. So some things that were under the surface may come back around. One thing that you can do, this is a big breakthrough, trip, uh, breakthrough tip for this, is to pause and clarify your expectations within these social dynamics. 
So the retrograde, you know, in general will offer these opportunities to revisit. Retrograde does everything with RE pretty much at the beginning. So you can revisit the groups and the causes you're involved in. You can ask yourself, are these people and projects still aligned with your evolving values? You can have a breakthrough through having an open and reflective conversation with your friends, with the collaborators, with the network, with the people in there to address these lingering issues or clarify shared goals. The miscommunication may be so great that it may just seem like a muddled mess of non-productivity. So any just clear, authentic connections of just getting right to the heart of it to see those clarified shared goals, reconnect with the people you resonate with, you know, um, and just address any lingering issues, that's going to help you break through this energy. One of the gifts we have this month is on December 1st, we've got the new moon at um, nine degrees of Sagittarius. Now all Aquarius friends can benefit from this, but those of you who are at the, at the very end of uh, January, we'll even just put it, we'll say January 25th through around February 5th and the closer you are to like the 29th, 30th, 31st, the more you may get a kiss from this. The rest of you aren't left out and the wishes that you can make and the positive potentials are all available for every Aquarius placement. These Sagittarius energies can bring a lot of optimism and can bring a lot of big thinking and a lot of vision. So you may be flying high on that at this time. One of the challenges that could come up from this is within the retrogrades and within in general these big goals, it may be hard to ground them into reality. Okay, so a specific breakthrough tip for the energy around this new moon combined with the retrogrades is to set up these specific actionable goals. Now, these aren't going to be the huge goals because with Mercury and Mars in retrograde, you're not going to be able to push things very far out to sea without them coming right back because the tides are going in, okay? So we need to know this, they're going in very strongly. So if you have this big goal out over here, you're not going to be able to push out towards that because it's going to come back. But what you can do is review the things that are standing in the way clear up the obstacles one by one, go through with a fine tooth comb, and to do this uh, breakthrough tip, which is to set these specific actionable goals. And these are small steps that will go far. A book that I read a while ago called Four Hour Work Week was one of the most inspiring and helpful books to me that I've ever read. And he talks about how we have these lists of things to do, but most of the things on our list are not really consequential they're things that have to be done, but they're not the things that will be the big steps to get us to our goals. Usually those are the things we procrastinate <laughs> about and we put off. So this could be a time to see these clear steps and to try to, you know, narrow down your list to have discernment for the big vision, but take the best action that will get you there. You know, and it is about trying to ground something into reality. So the theme at this time, you know, for this month, I'm, I'm calling it from broken to breakthroughs. And there is this energy of breaking the mold. So you can break the mold here by bringing these innovative approaches. The 11th house is ruled by Aquarius, which rules innovation. So innovative approaches to these projects, focus on building alliances with these like-minded individuals, embracing the new friendships, bringing back in the old friendships and collaborators that will help you to expand your influence in an impactful way. Okay, so that's, that's all happening. Another topic that Mercury retrograde may bring up that could be a challenge is you questioning, and this is a right time to question these things, you, your value or your place within your friendships or your social networks or within a group or within the projects. Mercury retrograde can definitely bring up insecurities and doubts, and this can manifest as feeling underappreciated or as misunderstood or not really clearly seeing how your particular uh, positive attributes are benefiting the group. So the breakthrough tip here is to reevaluate your worth and focus on the value you bring. And you can even ask people close to you, what value do they see you bring? Because sometimes we can re-see ourselves through a different lens when somebody close to us who knows us well can help us to put that back in perspective. So when Mercury Retrograde brings up these doubts, reconnecting with these old friends or these collaborators to say, hey, what is it that I bring here? Like, please help me to get refocused on, you know, on what I'm doing here. And you may need the social group or the friendship or something like that to help pull you through. 
Okay, so the next set of energetics that are dominating this month is the energy of Capricorn. Right from the beginning of the month, we've got Ceres there, we've got Venus there, we've got Pallas Athena. Um, Mercury won't get there until January, but we do have the sun moving along around the 22nd of December, and then we do have a new moon in Capricorn around December 30th. So there is a lot of Capricorn energy, and that's one that doesn't flow as well or as easily with Aquarius. This is nothing to be afraid of. It's just something to know about. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, and Saturn wants discipline. Saturn wants a plan. Saturn wants a strategy. And the more you can do that, the more you'll be in line with what Saturn wants. Having a very loaded 12th house can be a little bit stressful because this is the house of the subconscious and the unconscious mind. This is the place where, you know, those things that you can't quite put your finger on, you just feel weird about them are rumping and bumping around. So in the times, like in the month before the birthday month sequence starts, you know, you tend to get a full 12th house and that's what's happening here. So you will notice you may need a little bit more quiet private time. You may want to do things, um, you know, after this social burst with all this Sagittarius energy, you may find you become a reclusive or introspective or introverted or something like that. And taking the time to have quiet strategy with close people to you will be a nice transition away from this gregarious sort of stimulating, spiraling Sagittarius energy. It's also great for doing things like taxes and wrapping up unfinished business for the year. One of the challenges that may come up with this 12th house is the repressing of emotions and the avoiding of the spiritual reflection through other behaviors like avoidant behaviors. So, you know, this is really, really full and, and this is really very much about your inner needs and your emotions and trying to repress those energies may be a little bit more difficult at this time. So a great breakthrough tip to help you move through this and use this is to voluntarily explore your inner world and do whatever practices you can to release old emotional baggage. You can even search for this. I always have great suggestions for inner work. I love the presence process by Michael Brown. I love EMDR and NLP and EFT. You can look all of those up. There are so many things that you can do for free to do this, but sometimes, you know, you may need the support of somebody professional and a short amount of time with a qualified person to help you move through the things that are there can not only make you feel better this month, but can also help you open up to a whole new year of better experiences. So breakthrough tip here also is to acknowledge and to tune into the vulnerabilities that are coming up here in your emotional well-being and to see if there are any holes in your uh, plan or your self-care. And if you're like, what self-care, then that should be an indication that this is even more indicated for you, right? So this is a time to ask those questions about self-care, about mental wellness, about emotional flow, and get whatever support you need. Something else that may come up is a fear of letting go of control. You know, you do have Pluto here. It's just on the line here now into the first house, but it's been in the 12th house. Lingering lessons can still be happening you know, and also all of the energy of Capricorn can, you know, the discipline of it can make you feel like you need to maintain control and that you can't, that you have to stay objective. So, you know, when there are hidden fears and when there's emotional baggage and when, you know, all of this stuff is rolling around, um, it might just be overwhelming and prevent you from fully releasing what no longer serves you. So really asking these questions and praying and, you know, asking for alignment with um, releasing these things that are keeping you in these stuck patterns to help you break out of the mold at this time. So a breakthrough tip here is to surrender to the process of emotional healing, you know, and to prioritize it. Um, you know, anything that will support you in releasing these emotional burdens are going to be really helpful. Something that I really like, very gentle, very safe, flower remedies. You can look up Bach flower remedies, but there are so many other kinds too. I had a lot of help from these because I have my uh, Pluto has been sitting on my moon. My moon is at 29 degrees of cap. So it's almost Aquarius, um, but it's been really stressful. And a couple of the remedies that have been helpful for me are fuchsia. I hope I'm spelling that right. Okay. And, and also scarlet monkey flower. <laughs> I'm not going to write all that out, scarlet monkey flower, but um, 
I read about these for helping with repressed emotions in a book by Donna Cunningham called Healing Pluto Problems. So if you do have any things that are coming up, and you will for a while because Pluto will be in your sign now for 20 years, um, you know, these remedies are really gentle ways to help you bring to the surface. I said I wasn't going to write it, but I am going to. Scarlet monkey flower. Um, yeah. So this is, you know, this is a, um, a, a short term thing from the loaded 12th house, but it's a long term thing from the new Pluto transit. So, you know, those are, are ways you can break out of the mold of that and be productive. Okay, so a quick summary of what we've just covered here in the top left quadrant is to revisit your social circles and clarify your group goals. Uh, the retrograde is helpful for that. You can rebuild connections uh, from the past that really served you and you can connect with people based on your authentic values and you can reprioritize assessing those values. Um, you can balance this grand vision of Sagittarius with practical steps of Capricorn and you can use the new moon and Sagittarius to set goals on these topics. You can reclaim your self-worth by recognizing your value within these relationships. And if you need some help and some another set of eyes to help you remember what it is that you bring, then take advantage of that. Exploring emotional healing for this very full 12th house and focus on letting go of old patterns using gentle and productive resources like the flower remedies or some of the other things that I listed. Surrender, um, you know, surrender blocks or surrender the habit of not addressing the emotional needs that you have and looking for, um, you know, ways that you can explore these realms. Okay, now I want to give you a bunch of dates um, that are relevant for this month and the transits that are happening. I also want to give you some specific dates to note this month and we'll talk a little bit about what's happening on those days. If you're a person that loves dates and you're a visual learner, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your name and email address, click receive, and you will join my free VIP community that way. You'll get my weekly newsletter that is full of ways that you can connect with the stars in meaningful and helpful ways and understand what's going on. And when you get the welcome letter, if you click on the archive link and search for December 2024 astrology, you will get my list of sweet and salty dates, my favorite dates of the month, the ones to be most aware and careful of, plus a written write-up um, along with dates of the different aspects and transits that are happening. But I am going to give you a bunch. And actually, yeah, let's start a clean page for that. Okay, so this is a very retrograde month. I'm trying to give you all the information I can to help you have a very merry retrograde month. The first set of dates to know is Mercury retrograde. The shadow period started November 8th. The actual retrograde starts November, started November 25th and goes to December 14th. And then the post transit goes to January 3rd. Mars pre-shadow transit started October 7th, the actual retrograde this month, December 6th, finally, through February 20th. 4th, 2025. And then the post transit will go to May. Uh, so we've got a lot going on now. And then I'll go over these moon dates and we'll talk about specifics and generals. But these are um, the dates that I wanted to start with. Retrograde months make it very difficult to push things out far beyond the shore. Here you are on the shore. Anything that you throw into the tide will come back to you because the tides are very strongly coming in. That makes it perfect for experimenting, for dealing with things closer to you, for taking small actionable steps for the big goal, not going for the gusto towards the big goal because, you know, it's just, it's just too far away right now. And right now you have other things to deal with. Big retrograde tip, deal with the squeaky wheel. Um, that needs the oil and try to not conjure other things because there will be things squeaking all around you devices appliances electronics people situations are going to be squeaking so the more that you deal with just the problems in front of you the easier time you can have it's not a time to force anything and if you find that when you're trying to push for something it's not working out if it's something that you really don't have to do or you don't have to do it at that moment try to wait for the flow because you will have the keynote of Mars retrograde, which is frustration. And you can avoid that with the breakthrough tips that I'm giving you and just knowing to really, really go with the flow this time. We already talked about the new moon in Sagittarius and what you can do with that. That's um, in the days around December 1st. In the days around December 15th, we've got the full moon at 24 degrees of Gemini. This is in fellow uh, air sign. So that, you know, these two, the fire and air aspects are extra great for your air sign. 
So fullness, completion, fruition, drama, you know, any number of outcomes or things coming, becoming elucidated in the fifth house. So you may see something notable come around um, relationships, romance, true love. This house is the house of true love, children, creative projects, self-expression. This is a really nice aspect, um, but even we can still use a breakthrough tip with a nice aspect. At this time, you can use the power of this full moon and the elucidation and the bringing from the inside out to release creative blocks. You can pray for that. You can set your full moon, um, as I like to call reveal and release ceremony, uh, you know, points for that. If you've been holding back from expressing yourself, this could be a time that you can break free from fears and limitations, that you can dare to express what you've been hiding. This can have to do with writing. Gemini is very much about writing and speaking, or it can be any other medium of your creative expression. Jupiter is going retrograde. It has been since um, September. So you may be feeling things, creative projects or things involving romance or children that were moving forward may start moving backwards. Um, that trip of a lifetime, if there's a halt to it or something, Jupiter may, may just be kind of making sure your, your grounding is really thorough for your expansion, your future expansion. So if you feel abandoned by Jupiter, don't worry. You know, we've got a little bit more internal work to do behind the scenes, and then you might see that expansion again. But at this full moon, you know, this is a time to really just see how you can crack through any challenges there. But, you know, since this is in a trine for you, it may work out just beautifully. So 24 degrees, we'll use 19 degrees through 29 degrees to may get the biggest kiss from this. All of you have the potentials to work with this energy and see the outcome. So nobody is left out of this, but the closer you are in proximity to this placement. So if you have an Aquarius placement close to here, you'll likely see more obvious outcomes. So that's going to correspond with the days like around February 13th through the rest of the sign. And the closer you are to around the 18th, 19th, the more you may see something notable come from this full moon. So then we have another new moon on December 30th uh, at 9 degrees of Capricorn. So Eastern time zone and east of there will experience this as a black moon. A black moon is just a chance to go even deeper to plant seeds and nurture those seeds for a very positive, strong, robust burst from that seed that is planted. And we talked about the Capricorn energy, but we'll just jump back here. This is an opportunity to have a fresh start in your spiritual practices or your psychological space. You know, a time where you can set a new pattern for inner reflection or heal a fear or an addiction. A breakthrough tip here that you can use has to do with working with subconscious blocks or hidden fears. You know, so you're trying to break the mold internally here. You know, a lot of times Aquarius energy is about breaking the mold out there. Innovation, futuristic stuff. But what we're talking about here is breaking your inner mold and seeing what genetically, soul-wise, whatever you came in with, there's something that you're ready to crack out of and paying attention, especially in those days around the 30th, you can set the pace for a very positive, dramatic um, growth process from there. Okay, as I said, there are so many dates, I can't give them all to you, and you can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com for, for that info, but I do wanna give you, I mean, for, for seeing more, more dates by getting my newsletter, but I am gonna give you two more dates. And two more aspects. Um, let's see. Let's do the one to be more awareful and careful of first, and then we'll do we'll end off on a very, very sweet aspect. Okay, so in the days around December 24th, but really affecting the entire month, we have the coming back together of Jupiter squaring Saturn. Okay. This happened very strongly in August and September, then it kind of laid a little bit low. Now it's back again. So this has to do with the forward moving expansive energy of Jupiter being stymied by the careful and slow moving stern disciplinarian Saturn. Specifically for Aquarius, this is happening in your second house of money and in your fifth house of your creative process and you know, your, your beloved and your romance and your children and your creative expression. So like the reality of finances versus you know, the blissful space of the things that bring you the most joy. There, there's a block here. There's something that wants to flow, but it's not flowing. Two key words to help you break through this is discernment and streamlining. 
certain aspects with your creative expression may need to be streamlined and may need to be discerned. So Jupiter energy, I'm ruled by Jupiter, so I can say this and not feel bad about it. Jupiter energy can be a little excessive and can be a little all over the place. It rules Sagittarius, which goes into an upward spiral. It's mutable energy. And Aquarius energy is fixed. So that's a completely different energy. So what this aspect can bring is a forcing of being really discerning with your creative projects, being really discerning with, you know, your loved ones or your passion projects and not, you know, not going all over the place or being too scattered with your efforts, like really honing in on that thing that is the one that seems to have the most value. And whether that's, you know, a romantic interest or whether that's picking between your creative projects and putting your gusto behind one of them instead of all of them, that's kind of what's being asked for at this time. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Squares don't have to be bad, but Sometimes they do bring tensions and frustrations, especially when you don't understand what's going on, which is why I'm explaining it to you. So, you know, if you can streamline and you can discern, you may find that you can actually have this be a really awesome, um, awesome transit. Okay, so the last aspect that I want to talk about is always one of my favorite combinations, the two benevolence, which are Venus and Jupiter. So we've got Venus is going to go into your sign in Aquarius. Not only is that going to make you more photogenic and make people more susceptible to your charms, it's also going to come in the days around December 19th and make a trine with Jupiter. Okay, trine is the most favorable aspect in all of astrology. You know, Jupiter is the great expander. Venus rules love and beauty and money and finances, and it's in your house of, of uh, the attention being on you and your value and the things that you bring and your notoriety. So mark the days around the 19th. The, you may see some very special things come in and you may see some abundant luck in love or money or creative expression. Okay, so if you have resonated with my work, then please click like and subscribe and click the bell. I've heard that if you don't click the bell, my Posts won't go into your feed, but that's what you can do to help YouTube know that you resonate with my work. And you can also enable notifications and all of those things will help guarantee that you won't miss anything from me. If you love the dates, sweet and salty dates, things to be aware of and careful of, the awesome aspects, definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your name and email address and click receive to get my very informative weekly newsletter. You get so many free things. Most of my work in the world is free. You get even more free stuff as a member of my free VIP community, which is what you become when you put your name and email address in there. When you click receive, you will get the welcome letter delivered into your inbox. It could be in spam. You'll have to move it into your inbox. Click on the archive link there and then put in the search December 2024 astrology. And that's where you will find the sweet and salty dates. I always email that out a month early to um, my VIP friends so that you can prepare and know the dates ahead of time and know what you're getting yourself into. And if you're a visual learner, you can see all the dates there and have everything in a written format. So at AnnieHelpsYou.com, you can unleash by joining my free VIP community. You can upgrade by accessing my secret star portal. This gets the earliest possible access to all of my work. You do get the um, horoscopes and other posts early in my free VIP community too. And then you get them extra early in the secret star portal. You also get written horoscopes monthly for each sign and so much more when you upgrade there. And if you want to learn astrology, then you can click on up level and see my options. You can start with the basics or you can dive deep into my becoming a professional astrologer mastery certification course. If you think I put a lot into my free work, you should see what I put into this course. It has well over hundred modules and growing and it can take you from beginner to earning money in a very short amount of time um, if you apply what I teach you that way. And for people who have already been well-versed with astrology, if you can't seem to tie it all together because you know so much and you don't know where to go in the chart to give a concise, effective reading every time, that is my specialty. Plus, if you're trying to monetize your love of astrology, that is my area of expertise. So you can click on up level when you're there at AnnieHelpsYou.com. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.